Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for episode 93 of the Railcraft server Let's Play. And I am still working on the casting program. And I'm here to provide another update because I have found out some stuff and made some changes. And uh, I thought I would uh, go over the program with you again, see what uh, I'm doing. As you can see, the setup has changed a little bit. Uh, I planned out how I want to do the extraction from the alloy mixer and uh, putting the stuff back into the uh, system, into the correct caster. So basically what I'm going to have to do is I have a pipe that is constantly extracting from the alloy mixer and it goes into a buffer tank. And that's all fine and good, but I can't um, have this connected directly to the input. I could control this pipe, whether it extracts from this uh, refractory, refractory tank or not. The problem with the liquid pipes from advanced rocketry, when compared to something like say buildcraft pipes, which we don't have currently, um, with gates that allow more advanced control. With these, I can't choose whether they will prevent input while still not extracting, which is a significant drawback. With buildcraft pipes, for example, you could have a gate that uh, shuts input while also still not extracting. But these only have two states. They have uh, not extracting and allowing input or extracting and blocking input. So if I, for example, if I were to have this connected directly to this and have a redstone IO block controlling it, uh, when I could turn this on and it would prevent fluid from flowing from these tanks when it's being uh, extracted into this tank. But that would also mean that when I'm starting, when the fluids flow into here and they get turned into the alloy and then get extracted immediately by this, put into here, they would be pulled out and immediately put back into here. And at that point, this may be still be open and they would go back into one of these tanks uh, which is not ideal. It's it wouldn't work because I wouldn't necessarily want them to go back into here. I want them to go into one of the casters. Um, and if I turn this off so it doesn't extract, now it allows input instead. And if I'm pulling out more fluids from there to because these tanks are kind of limited, uh, so I have to do a bit at a time. Uh, now the alloy would, uh, or those fluids would possibly go into here if this happens to be empty. So I have to have two tanks and this redstone IO block is set up to control both of these pipes. So the fluid, the finished alloys are pulled out into this tank and then I can control, uh, I will keep this off so that they stay there. And then I can turn this on to prevent fluids from flowing into here. But since this is empty, nothing will be extracted. And then when I have, uh, when all the alloy is done, I can flip it so I will uh, I will then turn this off, or I will power this so nothing will flow into here, and then uh, control the valves normally, basically, so that the uh, only destination is the target metal caster. For example, if I wanted to make plates, it would be this one. So this is open, unpowered, and all the others are powered. And then I will uh, keep this on, 
and then also turn this on so that the alloy is pulled into this tank and then pulled out into the network and they would flow into the correct caster. So that is a little annoying. And like I said, if I had Billcraft pipes, I could control this more precisely with without having to have this uh, kind of valve control, but it is a working workaround and it is a little more resource intensive and a little uh, takes up slightly more space. But other than that, it is fine. Uh, it's just problem solving using the tools I have, uh, which is fine. So those are the, uh, that's the situation with the device or the machine itself. Uh, now let's move on to the program. So I'm currently hammering out the, um, the alloy crafting process. And I am working on the, uh, well, the alloy function. And it's going to be a lot different from the, uh, the regular casting function there. So, um, yeah, now I've had a look around at the different alloys that are available in this, in the Railcraft mod pack. And I realized that not all of them make sense. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, let's actually jump back into Minecraft for a little bit. And we're going to have a look at, that's not what I want to do. I forgot I have cheat mode on here. So we need to press R instead. Uh, if we go into the alloy mixer and then show all recipes, uh, the first page is fine. We have bronze, we have brass, invar, Electrum and copper nickel. And all of these have sensible ratios. So we have three copper and one tin becomes four bronze, uh, three and one becomes four, uh, two and three becomes three, or two and one becomes three, one and one becomes two, and then one and one becomes two. But on the second page, we have uh, Signalum, which outputs 144, enough for a single ingot. And then we have 12 liquid copper, 12 liquid silver, and 250 redstone. And this does not work out to 144, obviously. And I, I guess that there's a lot of wasted redstone in this process. Uh, that fails like I, I don't know it it just doesn't make sense and I had to change the way that the alloys are uh, the alloy processing works because of this because initially I was going to uh, sum up all of the components parts and get the total amount that the recipe would output uh, which works fine for uh, bronze, which uh, I was initially targeting. But then when I found out that these were a thing and all of these are the same, uh, they all output 144, but the input is significantly more. Now for this, oops, dang it. That's misclicked there. Uh, for this one, the the metals actually work out to 144 and the the liquid ender pearl is a catalyst of some kind i guess in this case would make sense uh, but it's not actually i mean i i guess it would have to be in the metal for it to be in darium i don't know it it doesn't make a lot of sense uh but if we jump back to the uh, to idea now, basically I had to add the, an output amount, 
which where you specify how much the recipe outputs. So for uh, bronze, it says four, because that's the sum of its parts. But for uh, signalum, which I added as a an example, uh, the output is less than the sum of its parts. So I have to basically override that. I also changed how the inputs work because uh, I had them static at first. Um, but then I realized it would be much better to just have an array of inputs that you can iterate over uh, since there can be between two and four basically uh, and having them as static variables is kind of unnecessary um, but yeah so uh, up here I calculate the total parts which I don't really need to do anymore uh, because like I said the reason I was doing that is to was to calculate the parts cost uh, and then depending on the uh, depending on the total amount output of the recipe I would calculate and the 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 amount of items you want times the item cost which is the cost of a single for example an ingot and then divide that by the total number of parts to get how much part fluid I would need uh, but that doesn't work now um, I'm going to have to rethink this quite a bit actually uh, so basically I need to if hmm basically if the cost of the or if the output of the alloy recipe is less than um, is less than the cost of the item of a single item for example an ingot then I need to count I need to I need to multiply the recipe alloy recipe up until I reach or exceed the cost of one item and that's the minimum I need so if we go back into Minecraft for a bit I'm going to get a no crafting calculator is what I want I'll switch that that to calculator mode so at 144 for an ingot and then the 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 output of one of the, for example electrum is 144 which is already the correct amount um, but for bronze each recipe only outputs four which is significantly less uh, than the amount needed for a single ingot so I need to know how many uh, how many alloy operations I need to get the amount needed for a single item and if I divide the item cost with the total output of the recipe, I get 36. So I need 36 times 4 
so 36 operations alloy operations to have enough for a single item so basically what I need is I think I'm saying basically too much but I need I need I need to do this the thing I just did uh, to get the correct amount uh, it's it's a bit complicated calculating costs of things if we go back to idea uh, I'm not going to call the cast function here I was going to do that initially but then I remembered that I have the request raw metal here that I'm actually going to use and then just control the valves using the valve function. And I'm going to have to, so what I need is let's, uh, let's, Let's get rid of, actually, let's, we'll comment this out because we don't need that. And then we can remove that print and we can remove this. So we need the, the, the alloy operation. So let's, let's define alloy operations. So we have the item cost. We're going to take that item cost and then divide by the uh, mix. Wait, no, no, uh, we need, so mix is the item, which is this. It has the reference to the alloy mixer, basically, and all the data needed for that. Uh, and the, the control and the control input and output is the, um, the redstone IO block controlling the buffer tanks, control the output. Uh, what we need is the recipe. So we should probably, I don't have that anywhere. So we should probably put in a reference to that. So let's put that up here. So we have the, have it in the entire function. Uh, let's call it recipe. And then um, it's in the materials. And then it would be F material, would be the name of the, the alloy key or recipe key material key so now we have the recipe and I do this of course so I don't have to refer to materials with the material key and then uh, the whatever field I want each time instead we can just do recipe and then what we want is the output amount so we'll put that there so now if the if the target item is an ingot we would get 36 here 36 alloy operations and then basically I said basically again Dang it. We want a loop uh, in pairs uh, and then recipe can we do now because as you can see up here, I did materials, F material inputs, uh, but now we have a reference to the, to the material in recipe. So we can just do that. And then we do 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 um, 
and then we need to request each uh, actually we need a double loop so we need four while uh, local performed operations equals zero so while performed operations is less than alloy operations do end increase that one step uh, and then performed operations will increment that by one after each each time so for each operation we want to iterate over each of the inputs uh, and then the value is the input you can call that appropriately uh, the cost is the input parts so it's one of these down here so we have 12 millibuckets and it's in millibuckets of course we have 12 millibuckets of copper uh, 36 of silver and 250 of redstone for the signal uh, and then that is going to be the input uh, name of course and the amount is going to always be one so it's going to request and we should be able to try this so it should it should request the raw material And I guess it shouldn't be called metal anymore because it's it can have things like redstone, which is not a metal. Uh, but that's just semantic for now. We'll maybe fix that. I mean, I guess I could just do this. Thanks to uh, IntelliJ. So now that I don't know, don't know why it's some of them are blue and some of them are white with an underline. I'm not sure what that difference is. Might be. I think it's something to do with the names. Anyway, so this should this this should work now. This should be able to make an alloy. And I do call the alloy down here if the if the material alloy field is true, then we call the alloy method. If not, we call the regular cast method. So if we uh, make sure this is uploaded locally, of course, to the test world, and then we're going to jump back into Minecraft. We need to force this to shut down. I kind of I should put in a quit option, perhaps, uh, and then we restart. And now, if we get an ingot of bronze, because I should have copper and tin in the uh, in the tank bank, we have tin and gold and copper. And then I want to get rid of the iron that is in here. Uh, let's get a fluid container. Throw that away. Make sure everything is nice and empty. These should be empty. And let's order a single bronze ingot. And we had an error. Did it move anything? 
Let's see if it moved anything. It doesn't look like it. Okay, so it failed before it managed to do anything. So that's good. That means there's nothing to reset. Uh, so request raw material failed. We passed in, I passed in the wrong variable to it. Uh, let's see, one for one is there. So I guess, I guess this wants, yeah, it wants a number. So all we should have to do is to number this. Come on. Oh, there. So now it should work. Oh, I didn't show that. Uh, so I put it two number call here to convert the parts because it's stored as a string, uh, converted to a number pretty simply. Let's try that again. One ingot, uh, six for bronze and one and confirm. Oh, okay. Uh, one for one, uh, 93, that is, let's actually show you what I'm doing this time. 93, that's what? Oh. Right. It lacks these, which I guess should be the same depending on the orientation or the position of the alloy mixer. Uh, uh, the request raw material, the material. Wait, no. That should be copper. And copper definitely has an input side and an output. Oh, that's spelled wrong. So I actually do not, should not need those. I just need to spell the fields, field names correctly and not make stupid typos in them. At least it was a relatively simple fix. Once I realized what was wrong. Okay, let's try once more and hopefully this time it will actually work and it doesn't. Arithmetic on a Boolean value, local transferred. What? What? What the? Okay. So this is causing a lot more trouble than I expected uh, with the old raw material requesting function. Uh, 96, that is here. Attempt to perform Arithmetic. Uh, oh, that. Oh, right. So, right, that is false because the transfer failed and I didn't account for that. So, if transfer, if 
if not transferred, then error fail to transfer uh, F amount of F material uh, from side input side to output side uh, return actually I don't need return because error stops the program right so now the same thing should happen but it should display a proper error that tells you what happened Oh, or not. Why the uh, 99? Uh, okay, so it, it updated the program because the line number changed. But apparently my not check didn't work. Uh, equals to false. Maybe not. It's just for nil. I'm not sure. Not sure at all. Let's try again. No. Dang it. So it, it com completely skips over that okay then we are going to have to uh, have a look so we have the transposer Uh, is the search broken? No. Why isn't it? Why can't it find the transposer? I'm pretty sure that's right here among the blocks. There it is. Uh, there we go. Component transposer. Why why doesn't that show up in search? That's weird. But whatever. Um So I'm using transfer fluid which uh returns a number. But how does it return a boolean? Or boolean then? Store returns a boolean. A lot of the other methods here return booleans. But a number, uh, it's weird. I'm not hardly sure how the typing works. Is it nil? But then the not should have caught it. I'm pretty sure pretty sure um, not checks for false or nil. Um, local try me equals nil if Try me if not try try me then print yes 
end. Yeah, so that is... It checks for nil. It checks for false. Uh, else print no. And yeah, so does it check for zero? No. So it only checks, so not checks for nil or false. But I, I don't know what's going wrong. What? What? So if, if transferred is receiving a boolean from transfer fluid and it's somehow false, that should work. I'm not sure what it means by... It explicitly says it's a boolean. Need to see the error again, so I'm going to just type in stuff quickly. Uh, attempt to perform arithmetic on a boolean value local transferred which means that that transferred on line 99 has to contain either true or false i'm uh a boolean neil is not a boolean obviously uh Neil is Neil. It's a Neil value. So it's not that. So it has to be false. But the docs doesn't say that transfer fluid can output false, which they should. They're probably out of date, presumably, which is which happens. Some parts of the wiki are out of date. But I don't I don't get why not doesn't catch it. shouldn't have to put a return here. It shouldn't make any difference whatsoever, but let's let's just do it. Uh, then I can say I've done it. It's probably not going to work. No. Okay. Oh. Oh, I see. Right, so I have, uh, this is this is a loop, and then I set transferred again down here. So it, presumably it, it succeeds with the first one. Uh, but it says it does the calculation now on line 100 does it do that no that that still doesn't make sense to me i guess i'll put another one of these here but it's not this line that is erring so it shouldn't unless it sets it there And then it ends that loop without erroring. And then it comes back around to here. But then it should. That is local to this scope. So it's uses the same variable. Maybe I should separate them. Let's try that. We do have to keep poking on this abomination of an issue. Okay. Yeah, it's still still erring. So I don't know what that where that boolean is coming from at all. 
That's really odd. It's very odd. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Hum, 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 hum. Hmm. Well, we've gone 10 minutes over time. So I'm going to end the video here and I'll have to keep beating my head against this, uh, this Boolean. And we'll be back next week and hopefully I should have it solved by then. So I will see you then.